welcome back to another video on this channel. Hey, my name is Roshni and this channel is called Bantu Grow Up. It's dedicated to self-love, self-work, and self-worth. And today I'm actually making a Lessons I've Learned video. So this is a series that I do try to do every single month and I wanted to kind of open up more of my life, share with you what I'm learning um, kind of on a personal level. Um, I still also want you guys to feel like you know me a little bit better. So I've been making it vlog style recently. I used to have Lessons I've Learned videos where I just sat down. So actually let me know which one you like better. I would love to hear from you so I can keep making what you guys want to see. My boyfriend and I just went camping for Memorial Weekend with our dog. It was a great time. It was absolutely beautiful. I wanted to take you guys along with me. So let's just get to it. from my boyfriend's uncle and it is so nice. It's super tiny, which I'm sure you've seen from the outside, um, but the inside's really big, so let me give you a quick tour. So there's a ton of storage space. So right in here we have like our toiletries, some starter wood, etc. There's like a little thing for like a Bluetooth speaker and a DVD player. There's a little TV screen. And then, well, I think the thing is dirty. And then there's more storage in here. We have food in here. There is my drone um, suitcase with stuff in it. And then we just have blankets, um, water, and then my books and my journal. But you can just see through the screens. So there's like a window. So you can see through there. There's a little bug nut so you can keep it open if you want to. Um, there's a little skylight and you're supposed to keep that vent open when you're sleeping, but it does have like a netting on it. And then there's the other window, so there's two entrances. And then as you can see, there's also shades up there. Um, so you can pull it down when you're sleeping and just make sure it's extra dark. And it has so much storage, I think that's the best part. So I have like keys, sunglasses, like toilet paper, um, my camera bag and stuff, like all of that right there. Um, and then on the other side, I'll show you in a little bit, but there's like a sink, um, there's like a little sink and a chopping board and like a little mini kitchen back there. You have to like fill the sink up with water and then it'll work. Um, but yeah, so that's where we can cook, and the cool thing is that these storage boxes right here, if you can see, it opens up into the back, so you can reach it from both sides, from the outside, whether you're using the kitchen, or from the inside. In my last video, I mentioned a psychoanalyst named Heinz Kohut, and he also came up with the theory of the fragmented selves. So if I can say that in the most succinct way possible, basically that means that a lot of the traumas, um, the pain, the emotional struggles that you deal with, a lot of that can cause your self to be fragmented, which basically means that, you know, when you experience trauma, a part of yourself kind of breaks off and is its own thing is kind of its separate world and you can kind of have these different selves so you can have who you are at work who you are at home who you are with certain people in your family who you are with certain friends etc and a lot of my trauma you know came from immigrating across countries when i was really young came from you know racism and not really fitting in i didn't always feel like the same person i kind of felt like i was juggling parts of myself so since then i've kind of been working on forming a more cohesive self that is a combination of all these different areas and being able to just commit to what you love and just be kind of unabashed in the pursuit of that is really really important um, and you have to take time to learn how to not judge yourself and how to just kind of take care of who you are naturally um, but finding people who accept you versus judging you and kind of people and communities that celebrate your differences as well is really really important in creating this cohesive self but then the other side of that also comes from you and from changing your limiting beliefs into something something that supports a more cohesive self
One of the lessons that I've learned this month that's actually been culminating over a few years is uh, just learning more about how I self-sabotage and how that presents in my life. So I remember, you know, years and years ago in college, I couldn't even fathom the idea that I would sabotage myself. Like, I, it just seemed like the craziest thing, but I knew that I was doing it, um, but it was just so hard to accept. So over the last few years, I had to really accept that about myself and figure out how it manifested the ways that I self-sabotage because it changed over time. And so um, when the habits themselves change, it becomes harder to realize that you're doing it, but there is a much deeper root problem that's there that causes you to self-sabotage. And so for me, a lot of it comes out of the feeling of being unloved or feeling unworthy or not good enough. And so that's something that I'm actively working on. Um, and so it comes in two parts. Part of it is just reminding myself that I am worthy and forcing myself to kind of believe that as much as possible. And then the other side is actually noticing the patterns and doing something about it. But if you self-sabotage, I just want to let you know that it's totally okay to take your time figuring it out. Just be patient with yourself, and as long as you're not really harming yourself or anyone around you, it's okay to take some time to unpack those patterns because a lot of them are really deep-seated, and it can take years and years to kind of figure it out. But as long as you're trying and as long as you're on this journey of trying to do better, it's honestly just upwards from here. Hey, so I wanted to give another quick tip. Um, I'm about to change, the sun is going down as you could probably see behind me. So it's definitely getting super cold. And before I change, a really great camping tip is, I think they're in here somewhere. Um, yeah, okay, so I have these little wipes. My dad actually sent these to me. Um, so they're just like face and body wipes. They says men's, but it's really just wipes. Um, so it's not like for going to the bathroom or anything. It's literally for like your face and skin. Um, and so what I do before I change every time, um, so normally like I'll wear an outfit for the whole day, change around nighttime when it starts to get really cold, and then just have another outfit for the next day. Um, sorry. So what I'll do is I will just give take a few of these wipes and just give myself a full body wipe down before I get all like cozied in to just take these wipes wipe through my body um change and then I feel fresh and clean for the next night and then I'll do that again in the morning before I change etc um and that way I'm just using like two to four wipes a day probably absolute tops morning and night and um but I feel way cleaner um I don't feel as gross when I get home before I shower etc so camping is going to get you gross regardless but it's a good way to help and make you feel a little bit cleaner for a little bit longer Hey guys, okay, so I wanted to show you this really cool thing that we found. Okay, so this, if you can see, is a deer den. So basically, this deer 
um, had her babies here and like like, like was you know, hanging out with them, nursing them, etc. the first few months. I think it's the first two months or so. So it's really interesting because it looks like, obviously, as you can see, there's tons of dead trees everywhere from like lightning storms and from wildfires we've had. So this is like a whole tree and like the entire root system of this tree. So that's what's sticking out, obviously, and it's huge. Um, so this tree blew over and then the deer came over to the other side, dug up a bunch of dirt, and you can see how deep that actually goes. Um, so she dug that whole area to lay against this wall on the other side of the roots, and then her babies would lay on her. Um, isn't that so cute? And then, I don't know if I can find them. There's all these markings and stuff, and all of these are from male deer rubbing off their antlers on the tree. There we go. Yeah, so they rubbed their antlers on the tree a bunch, and there's a few trees like that around here, and those are only the male deer that do that. But yeah, it's super interesting. This campsite has been so beautiful. I'm so glad we came. And now we're just packing up and about to get out of here. My business and YouTube is actually one of the sources of my second lessons, which is just how much having something that I can return to that's a creative outlet has helped me in the last uh, year or year and a half or so. Um, it's helped me so much just by realizing how much I'm growing, how much I'm changing, and it's something new that I show up to, and it's shown me that, you know, healing really isn't linear, that I have, you know, a lot of ups and downs with mental health, but it's something that I can always come back to. It's something that I can bring along with me and it's also something that I've been able to make a lot of decisions on. It's some it's a place where I have to take full control and where um, you know I'm I'm the one kind of deciding what's what's happening next and what I want to do. And I think that that has actually done wonders for my anxiety on a long term scale because for a lot of people that have anxiety, and for me especially, it's really hard for me to make decisions or to commit to things sometimes. Um, I'm always kind of weighing all of the options and all of the things that are possibilities instead of just being okay committing to one thing a lot of the time. So to have something that I've been able to, you know, create that has kind of a purpose and being able to show different sides of that and explore that every single week has honestly really helped me in just becoming a little bit more decisive and realizing who I am. And I think the other part of that, what that makes it different from just another creative outlet that maybe doesn't have the same effects is that it's really public and it's really out there. So it'd be the same thing as, you know, showing your art in a gallery. It just kind of gives you a new perspective when you are putting that creativity in front of people's eyes and that in itself um, was huge because it forced me to confront a lot of things it forced me to question things that I didn't love about myself or change things that I wanted to change but it also helped me really get used to myself and really kind of figure out who I am on a deeper level so it's still a long work in progress but I think that so far it has done so much for me in who I am and what I stand for and in the decisions that I make. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this one. Thank you again for all the new subscribers. Honestly, your support means so, so much to me. Every time I get a comment or get more views, I'm so excited. I really want my family here to grow, um, and I love hearing from you guys. So, But if you don't know, I do actually have a Patreon. So I made it a while ago, and I've had some really cool perks on it, but I haven't been promoting it a lot, and honestly, I don't know why. Um, so if you're interested, in getting like a one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching call with me or motivational letter if there I have a bunch of different perks on them um, and if you're interested definitely go check it out I would love to have you over there as well thank you so much for watching I love you all happy healing